Troy was a real city. A Trojan horse? Not really. It turns out that the legendary wooden horse that brought the Greeks their victory was a fairy tale after all. The Iliad and Odyssey, as told by Wishbone, are the episodes that everyone remembers for a reason. It's most likely the scene where the talking dog comes dangerously close to being seduced by a goddess sporting a blonde wig. But it helps that Homer's epics provided the structure for heroic tales for ages to come. The Greek siege of Troy was at the focus of everything, and we all know how it ended. With a huge wooden horse and a bunch of naive Trojans. Or was it? Actually, historians are mostly in agreement that Troy was a genuine location, even though the Trojan horse was a fantasy. So just a quick summary. In the Aeneid, Virgil's parody of the Iliad, Odysseus is said to have developed a foolproof plan that allowed the Trojan War to be ultimately brought to an end. The Greeks would first pack their boat and act as though they were leaving. Then, in the dead of night, they would construct a huge wooden horse exactly outside Troy's solid walls and enter. It seems typical that the Trojans would wheel the horse inside when they awaken. The Greeks would then break out in huge numbers, sack the city, and recapture Helen of Troy. Simple as pie. You might be surprised to hear that that story is nearly fake despite how convincing it seems. Furthermore, the Trojan War as it was portrayed by ancient storytellers was probably entirely made up as well. All of the main characters, Achilles, Hector, Agamemnon, and the others, were probably made up entirely, or at least greatly embellished. However, this does not imply that the Trojan War never took place. Actually, there were probably numerous, which has caused some historians to question whether the Trojan horse was merely a simile for the actual method by which the Greeks scaled the walls. Some believe that the horse might have simply served as a siege engine while the walls were being demolished the old-fashioned way. After all, naming siege engines after animals was a fairly frequent practice in those days, and most siege engines would have been covered with wet horse hides to avoid them from being set on fire. An earthquake, according to a different account, is what allows the walls of Troy to collapse. Poseidon was the ocean's deity, but he was also associated with horses and earthquakes. Then again, Poseidon was also the one who is said to have initially constructed Troy's walls. So perhaps ancient people were just confusing two of his domains. Therefore, that plan doesn't truly work. Our preferred theory? Virgil decided to add some eye-catching special effects to the climax of Homer's epic. Therefore, there must have actually been a Troy if there was a Trojan War, or others, right? There was one. In fact, there were several. The location, which is currently called Hisarlik, is in western Turkey on top of a sizable hill. But not a single city is located beneath that hill. There are ten or more. In the 1870s, Heinrich Schliemann, a passionate German archaeologist, mistook Hisarlik for Troy. But the author of The Trojan War, a very short introduction, Eric Klein, put it, He found Troy, but he also destroyed Troy. One such is the enormous blank space branded Palace Removed by Schliemann, located directly on the map of the city remains. And that was only the start. He dug up some precious jewelry and presented it to his wife. He carelessly dug the area that could have been Troy from the Iliad and declared a city that was more than a thousand years older to be the location of the epic. He was correct. However, in one regard, Hisarlik is almost probably Troy, despite the fact that it took archaeologists another 120 years to conclusively prove this. He is among the luckiest people to ever put a shovel into the earth according to Klein, for a reason. The issue was finally resolved in the 1990s, when a different, slightly more responsible German archaeologist discovered that the city was far larger than Schliemann had imagined. Troy was demonstrated by Manfred Korfman to be a strong fortress city suitable for a long siege. Troy was constructed, destroyed, and rebuilt multiple times, so it's understandable that an ancient Greek could mention a Trojan War without raising any eyebrows as excavations have descended deeper and deeper into the dirt. The term Trojans for malicious software programs that can infect computer systems comes from the Trojan horse. Many of these malicious programs have the appearance of being helpful or even innocent software. 
In this approach, they persuade the users to download and use them without making them aware of the potential threat they pose after they are set up. The Trojan horse tale is probably a myth, which is a tale that is repeated frequently and describes the values and practices of a civilization. What do you think about it? Comment below and let us know!